Anyway, you're welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day. Uh, we're having some fun in the studios already. Um, but let's quickly take a look at what the newspapers are saying and then we'll start our conversation. So Ghanaian Times says Ghanaians to go to polls today to elect new assembly and unit committee members. Now minority hints of boycott of CJ's vetting on Saturday. It's something we'll touch on. And Parliament approves over 2.2 billion Ghana cities for construction of roads and bridges. Remember the president said that 2020 is the year of roads. Okay, so Daily Guide says confusion over Kaswa Cops killers uh, lawyer and parliament approves 2.3 billion Ghana cities for roads. Now also it says Nana cut sword for naval facility and district level elections today. Major Mahama had no chance of survival according to the doctor. Okay, so security, and this is the finder, security for oil and gas. President Agufado cut sword for military base in Jomoro. Dr. Baumia cut sword for 100 bed hospital in Wale Wale. Rice importer Sukriza to mill and sell local rice next year and obey electoral laws as you vote today. Daily Graphic also says 57,030 contest district elections today. Unfortunately, uh, just a few of them are women, and that is heartbreaking. But we hope that, you know, numbers will improve as we move along. 48,000 officers and men deployed for the district level elections today. We can't postpone reforms, implementation, pensions, authority, and health service team visits Makasim Herbal Center. In the studios next to me, I have Dr. Okobo. He's the MP for Lejokuku constituency. Today, he's not wearing his usual. Uh, he says what? There's work to be done. Yeah, today it's, uh, you know, today is the elections for the district. Mm. We got district assembly elections and uh, okay. we've got to be in the field. This is my field, Atta, you know? Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, I take I feel elections. that type of no again. Oh, I take elections. <laughs> I seriously, take elections yeah. Very seriously. Mm. Uh, He's not wearing a coat. Uh, oh, men official dress. But this is what Allah wears most of the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. But today being an election, I was expecting to see him in, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the field gear, like I call it. You like see, what you're wearing? I know a lot of folks who dress like this on elections day. Uh -huh. When the results come, they will come and tell us that uh, there were issues with the process and all that. Uh, what has their outfit got to do with oh, the results oh, on the but, final but, day? But why, why don't we take such outfit to the gym or take such <laughs> outfit to the, 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 the kids? Anyway, kids you understand? Oh, that's uh, Dr. Oko Boy. He's the MP for Lejokuku constituency, a.k.a. Mini. Lejokuku Mini. Can it be a Lejokuku Jay-Z. Oh, Shatawale. Yeah. Yes, and also I have uh, Elijah al Hassan Suini. He is the MP for Tamale North Constituency. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Bella. Thank I you. I like your you. outfit, by the way. Thank you very you much. You look nice, as always. Uh, thank you very ready much. Ready for just, today? Just like you. Thank you. You do all the time. Thank you. Uh, are we you ready know, for today? Yes, After very ready. ready. Very this ready. Nice. Very ready. I, 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 first of all, we want to wish all candidates uh, in this uh, election uh, the very, very best of luck. Mm. Uh, I hope that citizens will take it seriously. Yeah. Uh, they will turn up in their numbers and elect people who uh, they believe can best represent them at the local level. Mm -hmm. uh, we seem to have neglected that level uh, in terms of its contribution to development as a people. And I think that we need to go back to the basics if we want to get our democracy right, because that is where uh, people, uh, you know, are empowered to take decisions that directly affect their everyday mm -hmm. life. And I am happy that it is still nonpartisan, and okay. I do not require any special attire. Uh, to be part of it. I don't think that elections is about fighting or debting yourself. Mm -hmm. Elections are, you know, civic responsibilities that we are all expected to discharge. And uh, if we do not approach it uh, like the lifting of uh, metals and, and scaring each other and debting each other, mm -hmm. I think we will be uh, serving our democracy uh, better. So in the nutshell, um, I just want to wish them the very best of luck. I'm however disappointed uh, so far that the Electoral Commission uh, is telling us that they do not know how much this whole exercise is going to cost well, well, until they, they when finish. Done, until they they finish. I mean, yeah. uh, I don't think that Jane Mensa, when, he was the, when she was the boss of um, 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 what is it called? Uh, the think tank, remind me. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. uh, will embark on any 
project without having a budget, without knowing how much it is expected to cost. I, then, I don't think we should treat national assets in that manner. It, it, it shows poor planning, in my view. If you say you do not know how much it's going to cost, then it, 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 it raises eyebrows as to whether you really uh, you know, have all your uh, ducks in row. Mm. And I, I don't think it speaks very well of her so okay. far. But I hope that the processes will be smooth. And I, I pray that people will turn up and vote for people they expect to represent them. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm not playing the devil's advocates, but I'm assuming that maybe the reason they don't also want to put out figures is because that will take away the attention from what should happen today. And so maybe that's why they are asking um, you know, for the elections to be completed so then they can talk about figures. They could, have, they could have just said that let's not discuss the cost now, let's finish the elections. Oh. But to say we do not know how much it is going to cost, it's a definite statement. Okay. And so it becomes difficult to give it any other interpretation. Mm. Doctor, why are we not postponing the elections today, especially after the Chamber for Local Governance had asked the EC to go ahead and postpone it? Because the EC <coughs> mentioned that we needed a new biometric yeah. register for the 2020 election. So then why are we using the old one um, for these elections if we're saying that it's not up to standard? Yeah. Well, there's a good reason why. I wouldn't say only JM, but both JM, His Excellency Ekufuado, and all leaders. Mm. There's a good reason why they dress differently for the Jubilee House and differently when they are going on a road uh, tour or on to visit the communities. There's a good reason why. What's, what's why the reason? Today he's very yeah, focused yeah, yeah. on outfits. Uh, because, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then, and then, no, no, no. I was quite calm. Because you said that you don't, it's, it's not about lifting weights and dirty yourself. I wanted to remind you that the, the leader you cherish so much, JM, doesn't dress the same way for jubilance as he does when he's going around visiting communities and checking what is happening. Now, um, uh, let me come to the Electoral Commission. You see, I don't want, I don't like it if politicians come out, one trying to defend the EC, the other is like speaking for the EC and all that. But you see, he's a parliamentarian, I'm also a parliamentarian. The budget, at the special budget uh, hearing, the Electoral Commission usually puts their case as to how much they need co to conduct elections. Mm. What the amount they need to do carry out these elections have been presented before us already. So it's not that they don't have a budget. But you see, budgetary estimates are not like exact amounts committed in the process. Mm. Are you going to say? So if they didn't know at all what they needed, they would not even be conducting elections. But you were asking for how much it will cost. And you know that, that is different from your estimates. Your estimates yeah. can say, you need about 10 million Ghana cities to run these elections. Yeah. You finish and you only spend 5.2 million. So I think that's what they were speaking to. But like I said, that is not my focus. Now, I would not sit here and wish people or those contesting my constituency well. I'm going there to see how well they are doing. Mm. I'm involved. I'm right in there. And you see, it's our leadership. I'm not only looking out for, in quote, someone who is sympathetic to the MPP. Anyone contesting assembly elections is a constituent, is a responsible citizen. Yeah. And I'm there to ensure that the process is smooth. Nobody is maybe, uh, I don't want to use the word cheat, cheater, but I want a fair process so that the outcomes will reflect the wishes of the constituents. But you know, this is seriously to all your viewers and to Ghanaians. I sat and observed how keen they were when it came to the involvement of uh, political parties yeah. at the local uh, level. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got the sense that the Ghanaians go like, leave it like that. Don't bring partisanship here. Is that what Ghanaians were Yeah, saying? I'm coming. I mean, okay. that's the sense I got. Okay. But I honestly want that particular position to be supported, justified by massive turnout, uh, turnout in these local elections. Mm. The average turnout in this country has been 30% or below. Some places as low as 15%. Now, if you argue strongly that don't bring partisanship to this level, and yet refuse to participate. It speaks to, you know, so I don't want to use hypocrisy, but it, 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 it will mean that we are not real. That's that. that mm. Let me use that phrase. Let's be real. And you know what? There is a good reason why the referendum to change an entrenched clause speaks to a minimum of 40%. Is it 40% percent now? 40%. Yeah, 40%, percent. 40 and at least 70 saying yes. In the judgment of those who wrote the constitution, that is a fair reflection of the populace mm. in saying that let's go this direction. Now, all these years, or in the past few years, most of the assemblymen we have, or women, assemblymen and women, those who actually 
voted for them were less than 30 or 20 percent of the those in the area what does it tell you it means those assemblymen and women are not actually a true reflection of the position of the community and so for me i really want to go on a one-month demonstration if the turnout records that less than 30 percent of Ghanaians participated it means we are a country that is not real we wake up to speak about issues but when it comes to delivering or participating we don't get involved and forgive me in conclusion mm -hmm. real development if this country will transform at the first basic level which is right by our houses in our neighborhoods it takes these district elections and not the parliamentary elections okay okay I guess and, knows. Mm -hmm. and so if we as Ghanaians continue to show very low interest in this uh, level of politics it means that we've accepted that development should come in a very long time. But whose fault is it that Ghanaians are not that interested in district-level elections? I mean, there was more noise made about the referendum than yeah. it, there ever has been yeah. about yeah. district-level yeah. elections. Even on social media, I was asking yeah. people, do you even understand the responsibilities of your district yeah. assembly members, yeah. unity committee, yeah. unit committee yeah. members, and your MP? Because a lot of people believe that the MPs that want to build roads, they want to fix the community. And yeah. so they would rather go out massively yeah. and vote for the MP and forget about the others because they think they really don't have much to do. My sister, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know um, to some extent, I sympathize with uh, the views expressed as far as the level of interest shown by Ghanaians in the district assembly elections is concerned. I sympathize with the views that my brother has made. But uh, maybe before I develop that point, uh, let me just uh, uh, address one issue that he, he raised. It has to do with... Uh, the fact that uh, he's not going to sit here and wish them well. Mm. Uh, elections are won, you know, before the election day, and he knows that, you know. So it is not what you do today that will really uh, impact. Before the election day. Exactly. I mean, there are a lot of processes that you have to take into yeah. consideration wow. before election day. If you are, if you are a good planner, you know, you win your elections before the election day. Trust me. All you there do. Are people who have been all, shocked. All, yeah. no, no, but what I mean is that all you do. You see, if you put your structures in place before election day, you can't be shocked on election day. It is all about monitoring. So if you have all your systems in place before the election day, the systems will take care of whatever manipulation will take place on election day. That's the point that I'm making. So it's, it's and, and, and when you talk about dirtying yourself, you don't need any special dress to dirty yourself. You know, when it becomes necessary for you to dirty yourself to save a situation, even if you are in a suit and tie, you will dirty yourself. Because, you see, if you do not really care about you know, what you are wearing, but what impact you will make, it does not matter at that point. I mean, mm -hmm. but if you are, you are somebody who cares about your Gucci's and your whatever, and you don't want them to get dirty, so you reserve them for, you know, uh, some other occasions and not, you know, uh, occasions. I, 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 but the point, the point that he made that is critical is about patronage. It's about turnout. It's about the need for us to take our district assembly elections seriously. Yes. Because, yeah. see, I have started this uh, communication in my constituency, and that's why I was telling him that elections are won before the election day. I've done a lot of campaigns in my area, trying to sensitize people, trying to let them understand the need to take this seriously. And the simple analogy I, gave, I give them every time we meet uh, is this. When you talk of the Assembly's Common Fund, many people tend to know of only the MP's Common Fund. Yeah. But you see, the common fund is actually for assemblies. And not the MPs. And not for MPs. The common fund is for assemblies. There is only 5% of the fund that is given to the MP. In fact, let me put it well so it is understood. It's not given to the MP. That is kept at the assembly mm -hmm. for the MP's use. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. The common fund, the whole fund, is for the assembly. 5% of that whatever amount is, it is, is kept at the assembly for the MP's use. And what would the MP be using that for? for Good. Yeah. So now people tend to focus more on just 5%, leaving 95%. So I explained to them that, for example, in my district, every quarter, if the government releases or the district assembly common fund releases, say, 650 you know, uh, a thousand Ghana cities, mm -hmm. 650,000 Ghana cities. It's only 5% of 650,000 that goes, that's 
it put that is put aside for the MPs use. All right. Now, uh, if you do the mathematics, you're talking here about just uh, uh, less than less than thirty thousand, less than thirty five thousand. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Less than thirty five thousand is put aside for the MPs use. Yeah. The rest of the six hundred and twenty something thousand is at the assembly for the assembly members and the district chief executive to decide how to use it. Yeah. Are you getting it? I get So you. why do we as a people tend to focus more on the less than 32,000 that the MP is supposed to use for our development and ignore the about 60, 620,000 620,000 mm -hmm. that the assembly members together with the DC are supposed to use. Why is that so? You see, it is because of lack of education. On the part uh, of? Well, it is, it is, it is, you can call it, you can say so, but I think the National Civic, uh, the National uh, Commission for Civic Education yeah. and others have been doing uh, some work in that direction, but they are not that resource to, to carry it through. And then again, as a people, we, we perhaps, maybe by our circumstances, tend to prioritize what we take important. So when the NCC is even in your area and are calling people for some of these, you know, right. you, are, you are too Step preoccupied up. with other survival, other things that you need to do to survive. But it's also to because go the MP goes out there and says, vote for me, I will fix your roads, I will do this, I will construct schools, hospitals. And so everybody assumes that then that is the job of the MP. I don't entirely agree with you, but I'll explain why. The point that I want to mm -hmm. sink in actually is the need for us to take the 620,000 Ghana cities more seriously and how it is used. Mm -hmm. And how that amount, and I'm just referring to my, this, yeah. how that amount is used is determined by the caliber of people you vote today mm. at the district assembly elections. Because when they are at the assembly, they form their committees, education committee, uh, the market committee, the, that has a trait, yeah. and then all the committees. And when they sit at the meetings, that is how they decide how to use this 620,000 per quarter to yeah. transform your area. So if you do not elect people today, that will understand the needs of your community and also be alive to their responsibilities at the assembly, then, then you, you will get nothing. If you focus on what the MP is going to use his 5% to do, it will not be enough to do anything. But you see, the, 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 the general notion that MPs bring that problem upon themselves is, 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 is not entirely correct. Why? And I say so because I have participated in the exercise and I know how I am held accountable mm -hmm. and I know what I said. And so sometimes it's, it's about a general notion and so no matter how the communication goes, the notion remains. Yeah. For example, the MP, yes, cannot say he is not an agent of development. Mm -hmm. You are a member of parliament you have a common fund, like I have indicated, yeah. that is supposed to help develop the area. But that fund is coming from, you know, a bigger portion. So in my engagement with my community, what I tell them, for example, is that if a road needs to be done, mm -hmm. the MP cannot say, I am not part of it. If okay. it has to be reshaped, the MP cannot say, I'm not part of it. But then, if the assembly that has 620,000 comes out with an articulator track. Yeah. The MP should also come up at least with a wheelbarrow. To support. To support. But because the, you also have a share. Okay. But the MP's but you see, main job. But you see, the MP's main job is legislation. Okay. And then again, lobbying. And representation is part of lobbying. Mm. So if, if you are in government, for example, and you are lucky to even be a minister, you are part of the budget process. And All it right. is during the budget process that the projects that government will undertake in the year, you know, the projects government will undertake in a year are discussed. And so you will have an input. Okay. You will have the opportunity to make an input if you are, you know, uh, 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 correctly placed as a member as of a parliament. Member. You don't even need to be a minister. Right. If you are placed correctly, you can be part of the process of developing a budget. Okay. And then through that, you can lobby for developments to go to your community. Let and that is how it is communicated sometimes during 
the campaign process. But I can understand that in the heat of the campaign, some people will, you know... Have you, uh, not, uh, have uh, you uh, not made promises before? I mean, I'm sure, Doctor, no, no, you, I mean, you've never no, made such no, promises. No, you see, for example, I'll give you a practical example. Okay, give me I know one you know Tamale. I know you yes. know Tamale. Yes. Um, there is this place known as Point Five. Mm -hmm. It's around Camvey. When I was campaigning, and the NDC was in power. You know, it's not that for infrastructure and, yeah. you know, we're doing all the roads across the country. Mm -hmm. Yes, as part, as part <laughs> of that. He doesn't think so, yeah. As part of that. As part of that. I mean, they are paying the contractors. That's the irony. irony. They say our books are, our roads are only in the green book, yet mm. they are paying contractors. If we didn't do the roads, why are you paying them? Why? Are you, do you want to just waste Ghana? Anyway, anyway <laughs> make your point. point. Now, point seven, that is uh, King David Junction. It, we had this emergency road packages that we're doing. Because I was rightly placed and knew who to talk to, you know, I pleaded for a particular road to be included in the emergency roads that we're doing. So the road started. Do you understand? Now, in that case, if I go and say that, elect for me, because I can help bring ma many more of this yeah. to the community. Did I say, but you see, when these people came to power, they, they stopped the road. I mean, it has started again. They have awarded it to a different contractor and it started. Now they stopped the road. Now, the, 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 the criticism I had was that I said I was doing the road. I should come and do it with yeah. my money as if I was doing it with my money. Do you understand? Okay. So that's why I talk about the notion and no matter how you communicate, it is put it's back still... in that notion All right. that you said you were going to do it. So come do it. Doc, do your people understand why they need to vote for, you know, the district assembly? Um, <clears throat> they should vote in the district assembly elections because based on the explanation he's given, I don't yeah. think that people have gotten this kind of explanation no. across board. You know, the... District Assembly elections started when? With the Fourth Republic, mm. right to Constitution. Right, mm -hmm. started before, but before. The, it was made constitutional. constitutional. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, you let's grant that it started in 1992. It was the 80s, How many years? 18, yes. Right. Yeah. It started before 92, but you let me grant, let me take it from 92. It from 92 up to now, how many years? Mm. <laughs> so, we've, yeah. done, we've done more than 20 years. 25. Is that not it? Yeah. 25 years. Yeah. So, this is something we'll be doing for 25 good years. It tells you something. It's not that people don't know. There is the hardware and the software when it comes to behavior of people, people's when you study attitudes and behavior. The hardware is that educate them, let the civic society, societies do their way. You can, that's the hardware. The software is the willingness, the psyche to accept that this practice is important. Okay. So let's be involved. Look, you can let people go do a thousand adverts, teach people until they repeat, until we change the mindset mm -hmm. that this matters. It's going to take a long time. But there's a second one, which is the most powerful. Why people don't participate much in local? What is it? Because the head of the assembly is appointed and not elected. Okay. And the people justifiably for that, there's, a, there's a, something called psychology of social contracting. I know you have a position. I had no hand in your coming. In your coming yeah. And you rule that world. So when it comes to that world, I tell myself, this is for the executive. This is where the president uses to get his things done. My focus is on the member of parliament mm -hmm. who came to my lane when I was having some fun to tell me that vote for me. And I was like, do you appreciate our problems? Mm -hmm. He is the elected officer. So even if he gets 2% of the funds, the populace are interested in the 2%. Mm -hmm and not the 98, because that's where their power rests, psychologically and socially. Mm. So, there are many. I worked at, uh, uh, at Ch uh, Chibi. Look, I've seen, when I was there some years ago, I was there for about three, four years, I've seen the MC pass, mm -hmm. constituents pass also, and they just walk past each other. Because they don't know each other. They, no, no social, there is no commitment, like, no sense yeah. of, you know, commitment to anybody. They, they, I've watched them. I stand at the hospital. The gentleman passes, they also pass. There is no way a member of parliament will pass and like that. Yeah. Just his presence will draw people. Some have issues with the markets, with the hospital complaint. They will not even approach them. Some don't even know him. And he also knows where his power came from. Yeah. So such a person in the morning will call Jubilee House and ask that I bring greetings from Chevy. Mm -hmm. He has no commitment to the people. And that is why I felt really sad when the whole process to get MCs uh, elected, elected was job like yeah. uh, you know mm -hmm. had difficulties and I've I've said it on many platforms I'll repeat it here if our brothers give us the signal they gave the last hour 
in the beginning. There's no way the president will continue to push that rigidly, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Because he knew, the government knows, the president knows, that without the NDC, who are key, there is no way you can get a 75%. Yeah. But it's unfortunate that the initial position, and they themselves know, like he literally jokingly said in parliament, that we put the first one on you. Mm -hmm. They were with us all the way until they went like, no. And then it threatened the whole Well, they thing. said they identified some problems. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying that I wish they had identified it earlier. earlier. Because the president consulted and the impression, the position we got from the I cited meetings that were had, some at the IPAC where I said, okay, I said, look, this is the only one of those few occasions where we are all on one page and all that. Mm -hmm. So I really, look, I'm one of those, I mean, when you talk to anybody in the MPP, any forum we've had, I've, I've argued strongly that until we vote for MCs, look, my sister, all that we are going to do today is one of the reasons why people don't get much involved. The gentleman who will be the chief supervisor is going to be elected. And sometimes, even when you want to push them, you want to ask them to go and see what is happening. Yeah. It's easy to get MPs to go and observe what is happening than to get some of the MCs. Mm -hmm. Because the commitment is only to the executive. So, um, um, my, my prayer is that in the future, we that. get to elect our, how do you call it, uh, MCs. Uh, MCs. And you know what? Two thirds of the MCs, I stand to be corrected, must approve the one nominated by the president. If you get a lot of folks who really represent us, who don't look at what they would receive from, let's say, a nominated MC, who don't look at uh, 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 non real issues, but will look at the real deal, yeah. you can get nominations from the president, any president who comes, mm -hmm. but it might be difficult for the president to secure the two thirds. Yeah. But what has happened in the Fourth Republic is that sometimes when you really talk to the assemblymen, I have seen assemblymen approve 100% an MCE. And within one year, they said they want to impeach the MCE. <laughs> no, I don't know whether I get me. Yeah. So you realize that in taking their decisions, it's possible that it was not based on capacity of the MCE, the background and all that, but maybe on other factors. So we have some work to do. And what about the representation of women? Because we've had yeah, yeah. you know, uh, very low yes. representation of women. It says uh, here that... For the unit committee election, 38,520 people are contesting. Yeah. And that consists of 34,769 men and 3,751 females. Now, also, when it comes to the district assembly elections, out of 18,510 people, 17,601 are males and 909 are females. We have a president who says that he's going to balance the equation yeah. when it comes to women yeah. representation. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have these um, very discouraging numbers of women. Yeah. Um, I'll deal with the women, so, mm. but let me just mention one thing Sumi okay. said, where people go like, oh, politicians, we promise to yeah. fix roads and all yeah. that. You know what? When you're a leader, any worry of your people, especially any concern that is significant, affects majority. Even the minority is your headache. Mm -hmm. Any concern that uh, is uh, what affecting your people is your concern. In fact, you cannot lead a group of people and claim not to be part of a concern they have. Mm -hmm. And so, just being the leader, the representation aspect, we have the legislation where you pass laws. There is the representation, which comes with advocacy. And you see, when you are campaigning, they tell you, do you know our issues? In fact, you must even know their problems. So, if you take Legugugu like this, when I was campaigning, 90% mm -hmm. will tell you the Lekman Road is so dear to us. 90%. If you talk to 100 people, 90 tell you, fix Lekman. Talk to someone to get this work done. I knew I didn't have the funds to fix the Lekman Road. I had to go and plead with them, make a case, cite reasons why it needs attention. Mm. And that's what I did consistently until the road came. So you meet a citizen who goes like, oh, we thank the president and your efforts. We see something going on. Because they knew I didn't use my money. But they also believed or were aware that you can put in a word. Yeah. You understand? But so, there's a majority that also believe that you fixed it. No, no, so but, then but, they will continue see, and say but, that but, our MP fixed it. But, but, but they are, they are you is not, uh, what's the it's Latin not. word? It's not to say you use you your use money. You use your money. But it's to acknowledge the efforts, the advocacy you put in to mm. get attention. And you see... And that's how MPs fix Yeah, yeah. yeah and you see, and we, we all have, saw yeah. him on TV. Yeah, yeah. And but over the years, there's been money allocated to the assembly to fix some of these issues. No, no, no. Let's come to... And by the way, the roads he said... But they never did it. The assembly really cannot do that kind of... Exactly. 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 I'm coming in. No, no, no. They, they don't have okay. that money. You see, I wrote, noted for infrastructure. I said they are noted for infrastructure. I wrote it here. <laughs> that first. And I started laughing. You know, it's interesting. If the infrastructure that is started by the NDC was real and not virtual, you, see, you get the words I'm using. You're saying it was virtual. You, you see, if it was real and not virtual, from Teshi 
to uh, how do we call it to Bunso to Wale Wale to you know have every chief telling a Kufado that fix my road please I'm on my knees when the president did his tour he came and said what is happening but I got the impression that JM had fixed so many roads. But he, I mean, we saw but some of these did. roads yeah, come, that come, were fixed. But he did. Come, come, You see, if, 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 oh, if the problem is so big, you see, and then you see, do part I'm coming, of it, I'm it coming. does not mean you but have yeah. solved see, the problem. SHS, he's an MP. Uh -huh. One of the biggest problems MPs had was when they reopened schools for the senior cycle. We still do. I'm don't coming. You. Please, I'm coming. I'm coming. They used to come to us for fees. No, don't you? No, I'm coming, fees. please. Oh. They used to come to you as in. MP, they were MPs. approached their okay. leader. Okay. Help us with fees. Mm -hmm. The last time I was approached was transport from Teshi to Volta region. One lady at Maui. They came for transport. Mm -hmm. Transport to go to school. So you think that's better because no, now they're not paying fees? No, the, the point is that because of the policy, it's been significantly checked. So you don't get a lot making a request that give me money. Give me, okay. So, in the same way, if roads. It's about the significance. It's not just fixing, let's say, the second interchange and say you are noted for infrastructure. If you attach significant portion of the roads, that call would not be as uh, loud as it is now. You get my point? Okay. So, look, Lekma, even Lekma Road is an example. He says that, oh, fix the roads. But Lekma wasn't even fixed under the previous no, MPP my point, No, my point is that <laughs> for the past eight years, they sent contractors to the road. When we came, uh, we were in a hurry to, to do it. You know, the liability on it was so huge. And it's the same with a lot of things. But you, the basic point I'm making is that mm -hmm. if they had done so much infrastructure as they claim, and it was significant infrastructure, the burden on the president would have been maybe create more jobs, build more factories. It will not be the single most important call for roads from Teshi in the south mm -hmm. right to Wale Wale. Even in are these you, communities, it's roads everywhere. Are you saying that for the next you know, year that you've... you've it's a year, of roads. a year of roads. You'll be able to fix all these major roads. Do you think that you can do that just in case or you don't win elections? We, are, we, we don't have the, the capacity to feel, uh, f uh, fix so all the roads. So then if NDC should win yeah, elections, then they can come back and see, say that you no, said 2020 see, was a year I, of roads. I, but I, you didn't I'm do being real. I'm being real. I'm also asking a question. Why not? You, are, you said that, are we going to fix well, all major roads? Well, and I said, we cannot fix all major roads. Okay. Yeah, let's talk but, about the women. Okay. I'm coming. Uh, wait, wait. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll come uh, back uh, to uh, the roads. Don't no worry. Oh, please. Let's, let's talk talk finish with the elections and, so we and, can okay, go let, let, me, let me, a second, <laughs> and then I'll wrap up. Let's try and do this. Let us allergy come in. Doctor, hold on. Let's allergy come in. I'm in free comparing roads to free SHS. It's just an announcement. But you see, I think that it's important that we, 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 um, what's the word? empower our women. And I think that as a country over the period, we have uh, you know, made strides yeah. in uh, opening up opportunities for more women to be part of governance. Um, one thing that I see, and it shows even in this assembly elections, uh -huh. is sometimes also the willingness for women to step up you know, to their plate. The, 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 we know that we have not yet done enough with our society, our thinking, our psyche, and you know the way we and and how it should embrace women who step up. We yeah. have not really you know achieved a lot in that direction. But it also remains that empowerment for women is like uh, seeking freedom. Mm -hmm. it's, it's usually not really given. Sometimes when you want your freedom, you have to take it. Yeah. You know, people like you are doing great on television, in media, in public life. I know it's not easy, mm -hmm. but it is I've a choice. Already, so it's a know. choice. <laughs> it's a choice. It's a choice that you have to make. Yeah. Knowing all the kinds of things that will be thrown at you. But it's amazing how your presence will inspire many more people to also begin to pay less attention to their societal deterrence yeah. and, and venture into it. And that is what I expect to see more of women, especially when it comes to an exercise that is open to all like the district assembly elections. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Go to the assemblies and how many women have actually gone to pick nomination forms to contest? Mm. Even though we have very, very capable women in our communities. But sometimes due to the fear of what society will say and do and think, they don't venture. I think we need to encourage ma many more women to be bold and to step up. But it's also, to, it's also because of the kind of comments that we've made about women 
who try to take up power and responsibility because they'll say, oh, she's just a slay queen or she has nothing to do. Go home, take care of your family. That's I where understand. you belong. That, you see, that is, I mean, so many women have demonstrated so far that they are bigger than kitchens. Mm. I mean, and, 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 and society gradually will have to accept it and they're accepting it. But what I'm saying is that for us to break more barriers. For example, the Digital Assembly elections, yeah. if you want to talk about legislation empowering women, it is, it is non-partisan and it is non-sexist. It's not gender-based. Mm -hmm. It is open to all. So what stops, you know, women who are in the majority in this country from participating? They need to step up. Are the you men know, and take ready advantage. To support of, these women. You see, you see, when you are when the men are going into a contest, they really do not care if the women will support them or not. They just step out, mm. and then they do their campaigns. And those who will support them will support them, and those who won't won't. Okay, you get it. So, I think many more women will need to also develop that mentality. That look, it's a contest. There's opportunity for all. It's not opportunity for men. Yes, mm -hmm. it is more difficult for a woman you know, to, 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 to succeed given the, the, the structures that are still in place. But the first hurdle is that it is not a competition restricted for men. Okay. So step out, you know, and, 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 and you'll be amazed at how many more women, your presence, they will inspire mm. to also do other things, you know, in other places. Yeah. So I want to commend all the women who have uh, put themselves up for the... Uh, district assembly elections. elections and i pray and hope that they will win i think that people must support them because look over the years and recently i saw an article by uh, uh, Barack, president obama, obama uh, yes. saying that women are you know better, uh, better leaders, leaders. Yeah. and i mean just even look at our homes mm. <laughs> i mean just just even reduce it to as basic as as the home even the career women tend to manage their homes better than okay. career men you know, so I think that it's, it's an established fact that women do better under pressure. And so if we give them more responsibilities, we'll not be uh, 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 hurting our society. So I wish all the women the very best of luck. And mm -hmm. I pray that their communities will support them. And they will also go there not just to uh, uh, be part of the numbers, but yeah. to seek to make change, to seek to ensure that the assemblies actually deliver to the benefit, the benefit. Uh, 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 of the of the people. But okay. uh, on the election of DCs, there's one issue, there's one part that I agree with, and that is the psychological expectations that people have of the MPs based mm -hmm. on their interactions with him and or her and 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 the process they go through electing uh, uh, him or her. Yeah. And that is why I with my party and other civil society organizations believe mm -hmm. that we can create that psychological expectation for the DCEs to by getting them elected. Okay. It is important that mm -hmm. we get them elected. We all agree. And I think that he's right. That when the people go to the ground and campaign, I'm sure it is there that they will let the people understand the funds the common fund that comes to the assembly yeah. and how they can use that common fund to solve their general problems. Okay. And then when the people then elect them, they will ask questions of them. It's important. Mm -hmm. So that is why I am disappointed that the government and the president, on the mere basis of whether or not we should introduce parties exactly. into it, will throw that very good idea away. But could we have it's gone with important. that without amending Article 55? No, well? we didn't we... need to amend Article 55.3. We only needed to approve in Parliament. And we're willing to support the majority to, to, to amend 2431. But how two, are four, these people going two, to four, start three, campaigning one. for people to vote? No, for we them, just needed... Uh, they're, they're look, it's just like the Assembly members are campaigning. They are not campaigning on NPP and DC. Mm -hmm. So the district chief executive, if you also wanted to be a district chief executive, the electoral commission will fix a date and then open nominations. You go and pick a form and then you start but campaigning in your district. But we know they are not district. campaigning on party colors or anything. Yes. But then like the president said, we know it exists. So maybe you see, you underground see, they are you doing you that, see, you but see, we're not doing it openly. Bella, Bella, even for DCE ship, if it is not partisan and people go and pick forms, maybe if you go to your assembly and you pick mm -hmm. a form, by virtue of whatever relationship anybody has with you, the person may decide to support you. Yeah. Because maybe I think that you are a socialist or social leaning, mm -hmm. or you are property owning because of your thinking and your ideas. I can support you, but I don't need to support you or to put you on my party platform. Okay. Then it becomes... It, Won't that, that make it easier? No. You see, what we are saying is that, for example, 
For example, with the assembly members, there are two examples I've always given when I interact with my community members on why we were against the, partic the participation of political parties. Mm -hmm. When the assembly member calls for um, the community where he represents to come out and do a cleanup exercise, mm -hmm. all parties come out. All parties do. When I go and call, there is the high tendency that only my party people will come Which because will come. they don't really care about my success mm. as, as, as an NDC MP. Very few will ignore the fact that you are an NDC MP yeah. for the area. They will see you as MP. Very few. It's your party people who will come. Mm -hmm. And so when you make the assembly ma man, an NDC assembly man, his authority will be limited by the partisanship. His authority over the community will be limited by the partisanship. Some people will begin to see him as their assemblyman, and others, and others will, will see not. him as not their assemblyman. Mm, I guess now, you know. now so, so that is one example. The other example is that when you go to the assembly, all honorable assembly members are treated equally. There's no majority assembly members, and there's no minority assembly members. And so when they go to sit at assembly meetings, their decisions are usually based on what makes sense to them and what will serve their people. Okay. It's not based on minority majority. Okay. And so the assembly member for, say, um, Chogu electoral area or the Taha electoral area can walk to the DC, whether he's appointed by NDC or MPP, and demand, you know, a solution for his area. Yeah. Without the assembly, without the DC, viewing him as either part of him or, or not. Or not, okay. Because, you see, he's representing a community and not a party. Okay. But, you see, today, let me give you a practical example. If, Land on that if, so yes, that if, if, speak. if <clears throat> Dr. Okoboy and I practically go to the ministry today to look for support for our area in, say, education, we go to the education ministry. And we want support. I want a six-unit classroom block. And he wants a six-unit classroom block, mm -hmm. too, for his community. Trust me, the, the, the reception he will get, because the MPP minister is in office, yeah. is different from the reception I will get. Because I am, I mean, in fact, one minister of, I will mention, minister of health, actually told me when I told him I needed a clinic for my area, what that uh, why, will he, why will he give me a clinic when they want to take my seat from me? He actually said, he actually actually said that, but it was, but it was in joke. jest. Okay. You know, but you see, mm. it, it was in jest, to, to admit. It was yeah. in jest. But yeah. you see, it tells you what will go into the decision to, to support you or not okay. when you are considered an opposition MP. Mm. So if you have the assembly members also going to the district assembly on this partisan lines, they are going to be considered for us and against us. Exactly. And their, solu their problems will be attended to in that manner. All right, Doc, come in and then mm -hmm. we can talk about So I think we need up. to elect DCs. It shouldn't but matter whether they are partisan, partisan or not. I think they shouldn't be partisan. But the fact that we haven't decided on whether it should be partisan or not should not deny us the opportunity to elect so, our DCs. Okay. All right, Doc, come in you on see, this one and um, then... First of all, for the woman, let me say that... I mean, to say that the women should come up and compete because it's not being restricted to only men. It's not enough. Why? You have to take deliberate action to support the women to participate and at some places, more or less, put in place measures. That's what we refer to as affirmative action. A positively discriminatory action in favor of women. women. Okay. I acknowledge that. Yes. So, look, that. if we continue to go like we urge them, Let's try and vote for them. You still continue to see very low levels of participation. And you know the reason? is because we have inherent structural arrangements that favor men mm -hmm. and not women. The average Ghanaian, our culture as a country, you, 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 are, you are counting on the woman to take the kids to school. That's not to say that's their job, but the structural arrangement. So if this morning she has to compete, if you have elections, most of the guys I know who are going, by 12 a.m., they were still doing their last touches. How many men in this country will be comfortable with a partner who is at 12 a.m. is with his, her team doing last-minute operations and then by 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. must move out? So you have an arrangement elsewhere. They have 
structural arrangements which will allow the woman to send kids into care and all that. Mm -hmm. You don't have them. Mm -hmm. So what you do is to now put in place measures that will guarantee you a number. So let me let me put it this way. So in Lejokuku, yeah. we have 12 electoral areas. Mm -hmm. So you legislate. If we are serious about this woman participation, what you say is that one third is for women. So is, that, is that what you did? No, no, you don't get it. That's that what has we done. Yes. Okay. If I say I'm urging about a particular electoral area to go like that, once you've not legislated it, it will people not will not uh, comply. Reason why we're asking why there's been a delay in the affirmative yeah. action bill. Uh, you see, but you see, even which affirmative action bill comes with a lot of things. Yeah. But you can take an item, uh, item by item basis. If you want to fast track the participation and to improve the levels, you you try and legislate, like I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Look, I've got all the women ladies I've met on conferences who are MPs. Guess what? They didn't go for these elections we go through. All the ladies I've met on international court, youth, MPs and all that, they tell you they were they were appointed by their parties. So what they do is that they have uh, some safe seats for women. Okay. So if it's three hundred seats, fifty are for women. If you the political party, when you, you get votes, mm -hmm. let's say if you get forty percent of the votes, forty percent of the, those seats belong to you. Okay. Yes. Okay. So out of the fifty, they give you less about fifteen or twenty, which is forty percent. The one who wins power. If they had 60%, 60% of the seats is given to them. Right. So if we have such an arrangement in parliament, you know there are some 60 women you will see you no matter the country. Exactly. Why are we not doing it? That's why I'm saying that that is the way to go. I'm being real. If yeah. we don't do that, in the next 70 years, if anybody sits on this platform and talks about district assembly, it will move from 5% to maybe 1%. Are yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It can only get worse or the same because the structural arrangements, they change over many years. In the next maybe 50, 60 years, the mindset will change that it's not some jobs are not meant for the woman. That would take many years. So if you are waiting to uh, uh, for that to change, it means you also have to wait 60, 70 years to see an to improvement. See. Look, Merkel, mm -hmm. what is even interesting is that even developed countries who have structural arrangements and culture which favors women participation have put in place mechanisms to encourage women. Yeah. So, Merkel, the Chancellor, uh, is it Vice Chancellor? German, yeah. Uh, yes, the German Chancellor. The German, yeah. Yes. Yeah. She came through a special arrangement from the East. From, she was formerly, from, she's from uh, East Germany. Mm -hmm. That's before the unification. But Merkel did not go through open contests like we are having at uh, the district elections or uh, how do we call it? Um, the yeah. main uh, elections. And oh, people will come. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no but, but yeah. my, I was hoping, but see, I think our time see, is my, 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 my point we'll is that my point this. is that it's just to remind people of how important a uh, legislation is as in securing seats for women. Yeah. That this chancellor we see, who has been one of the most stable leaders in Europe, one of the longest serving leaders in came through no, a special absolutely. arrangement. Yeah. Oh, no, be no, patient. That's, that's I was quiet when you be patient. No, just, oh, I'm helping you. Okay. Be patient. I'm helping you. Okay, I'm I'm just saying, I don't need help. I'm just saying, we're, we're saying, you agree. Let, let, let him, let him laugh. I wish we could have moved on to the Until we do, until we do, until we do. That's what I'm saying. I agree. But until we do, we encourage the women. Exactly. Look, look, now, please, a word on this. Wrap up on this. I continue to say that if the NDC meant they meant well they have all these reasons mm -hmm. why we don't need to bring partisanship to the local level why do you put these things in your pocket sit on it for five weeks to a referendum when the state has put everything together and come out and look i'm i'm quoting yile mm -hmm. one of the most senior mps ndc mps mm -hmm. he said it on the floor he's here that we agreed with them in the beginning we let them on until they got to the last hour you and we that, pulled the first. You know that Wait. was said in jest. Mm -hmm. Okay, but because somebody okay, said right. something was it to not him. Exactly. And he was no, 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 was it not no, no, said but, in jest? No, no, but you know that. put the jest aside. I'm telling on record because that, it was oh, in response to something. I'm no, telling you, oh, please. You know, it was in response look, to something oh, else. Okay. Look, there are few. Look, there are few things that yes, there are few things that I want us to come together and take out partisanship. Okay. The president of this country, His Excellency, knew that if you decide to go on the path of partisanship, you can never secure 75% or 40% turnout. That's why he was engaging all contests. And I have on record, I've stated, meetings that I see in Keter attended representing the NDC, mm -hmm. meetings that were for some purpose, they all said, we are on board. But Please. they said if you invited some individuals, that, that is not no, a my, representation my, my, of the my, entire my, my party's sister, position. These meetings, they, it was not individual. It, they represented the party. 
and well, look, they didn't. look, and Suini says when I go for a uh, clean up, is the end is people who are like to turn up. Look, this country, we have to be careful. This perception which people want to drive drive home mm -hmm. that once you have a party color. It, it indicates, we rather must be working towards a place, a situation, where even when you are an NDC man, you All should right. be able to embrace everybody. All right. We should not use that to justify, we're, then we should stop, we're we should up stop on this. going for MP elections on party lines. We should, we should remove partisanship from every level. Let even individuals go for president. They should not, yes, that is okay. how. That's let's how we let's wrap up on this and quickly talk about the issue concerning the go boycott of the go Chief Justice Betting. And why the minority I says that they will not agree with the vetting that's supposed to happen on the 25th. Yeah, he said he loves the ideology of the NDC. That's yeah. why he's going as you know. That's you know. Ideology. <laughs> you know, you know. Let's talk about CG and wrap all, up on that. First of all, I think that I I have listened to the news and followed the discussions on this vetting of the CJ. And mm -hmm. I think that the communication uh, that is put out by our media, I don't know who is urging that kind of communication. Is, is wrong. First of all, the, mi the minority does not intend to boycott the vetting of the Chief Justice. We do not want to. It serves no interest boycotting the vetting of the Chief Justice. It serves no interest. We there don't was want nobody to. who ever said that they were We going don't to go want ahead. to boycott. But it is as if the majority <laughs> in Parliament is urging and, and seeking to deny us an opportunity to be part of the vetting process. Because you see, there's a standard practice mm -hmm. in parliament that when president nominates people for appointments and they have to go through the appointments committee, you advertise Bless for me. two weeks okay. for people to send petitions and memoranda to the committee mm -hmm. before you vet. Two weeks. All right. Now... The president who appointed the first chief justice and knew that the chief justice was going to go on retirement Actually, waited until Friday. yes waited until late to nominate another chief justice who has to go through the process of appointment mm -hmm. it is not the fault of the legislature that the vetting process has to be done two weeks after the announcement. If the executive, here being the president, wanted a smooth process, he could have done the nomination much earlier so that the, the legislature would have had time to do the advertisement for two weeks, mm -hmm. like we did for the, chief, the, the, the Supreme Court judges who we just finished vetting. We didn't nominate them. We didn't boycott them. So what interest will we be serving boycotting the chief justice? Okay. So the point is that we understand, and we even in the minority, we understand the challenge that the president has put all of us in. And we are willing to, to limit the number of days. So that how many days? We are suggesting to them that, look, Parliament is in session. We are doing budget estimates now. All and right. he knows the work that goes into budget estimates. Dr. Oko knows mm -hmm. that even today when you go to the chamber, most of the time, members are not in the chamber because they are at the committee level looking at budget estimates. Look, on the day that we were vetting one of the Supreme Court judges, I had a budget estimate hearing of one other committee. I had to be shuffling between the vetting and that. So we know how difficult this work is. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that, look, we understand that the president didn't do the nomination earlier, which he should have done anyway, but we are willing to work with you. So let us consider between, let us advertise for one week. Instead of two weeks, let's right. advertise for one week. And then after one week, we can either consider 23rd December or 30th December for the vetting. 23rd and 21st, that's just two days no, difference. Listen, 20, Parliament is supposed to rise on 21st. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that give us time. Whilst you advertise for one week, people bring the memoranda, give us time mm -hmm. so that we can concentrate on budget estimates. Then Parliament will have finished the approval of appropriation by 21st. Don't agend Parliament. Mm. Appropriation will be done on 21st. We will be willing to use two or three days yeah. to do whatever research we have to do. Look, 
we so are talking about the chief justice of the land. All and right. if we took two weeks to prepare to vet Supreme so Court judges, judges, and we are willing to even do three days or one week to do the chief justice, and you don't want to accommodate us, and you are putting it out there that we are boycotting, we are boycotting. You are doing a great disservice to the nominee. My, my time is they up, are but doing I'll, a I'll great give, disservice to the nominee because it is not in the interest of the chief justice to be vetted so, by one side of the house. All right. If the majority wants to serve him well. They must, they must accommodate these okay. suggestions so we will all do what Master. is proper. Let doctors speak Master. on this as well, then we Master. can go. Time they've is not, up. They've not been bad from coming. When you are leaving. That means it's going to happen I'm, whether I'm they come coming. or not. Wait, no, That's we, what they're please, telling us. Oh, we should please. They will do it. We want them to Because they have the, the majority. Process. But okay. you don't determine when you want. Look, you have to be multitasking. That's what we are doing. Those who are going for the majority side are also running from committees. But there are things must be done together, and this is coming from Honorable Mesa. Let All me right, just we'll conclude. take this quickly and then we conclude. The second Chief Justice of the Fourth Republic, this is during Jerry uh, Chama Rollins time. The second Chief Justice of the Fourth Republic was Justice Isaac Kobina Aban, this is from Mesa, who was nominated on the 15th day of February 1995 by the President and was approved by Parliament under a certificate of urgency on 21st February 1995, despite the objection to his nomination by the Ghana Bar Association, not even MPs, the Bar Association. Mm -hmm. His appointment was still maintained by the President. See Ghana Bar Association versus Attorney General 995, the case and all that. Okay. The point is that, that, that only means lasts. That, that means that you are right. saying that it's still lasts. going to happen Look, with the or without. Please, please. This government was made up of only NDC. 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 Are you saying that this vetting is...